One year ago today, my life changed forever. What has been somewhat of a joke on the channel and in real life as well, has been very, very real to me for the past year. I'm the kind of person to use humor to disguise feelings, to hide how I'm actually feeling about any situation in life. For that reason and many others which we will get into later on today, I've never told the full truth, the full story. Today, one year on, I finally feel ready to. At least I think I do anyway, so let's see how this goes. August 2021. I was on what was a great night out, just in the centre of Birmingham, Broad Street to be specific, which probably in itself has made some locals gasp. And I get that, but as a fit and healthy male in his early 20s, I didn't exactly see myself as a target, you know? But Broad Street, to anyone that doesn't know, is kind of regarded as the strip of Birmingham. So if you've been to Magga, if you've been to Zanti, if you've been anywhere that you would go on a party holiday, they all, generally speaking, have like a, a strip of where people go, where, where it's at, basically. And Broad Street to Birmingham is, is kind of regarded as at least one of those main places where people go. As you guys know, I've been on lots of nights out. Lots. I was a student at Nottingham Trent University, a uni renowned for its nights out, and I lived up to that expectation, that reputation, if you like. But don't get it twisted, there was no aggro, no drama the entire time. I was just there to enjoy, and enjoy I did. <laughs> Before all this, I always pride myself on being able to multitask with my ability to rationalise information and take a step back and think before doing anything. Physical fitness had never been a problem, despite putting on a bit of weight at uni, I've always been very active. Above all, my ability to focus on an objective so soul-heartedly and be so laser-focused, I think I get that from playing sports as a kid, all the rugby and team sports, and I was encouraged to play by my parents. Like To be honest, my parents were really good like that. And that is what now, after this, I find so difficult to do. And that might not sound like much of a difference, but to me, that's me. That's who I am. I never went around screaming from the rooftops that that was what I was like, because I'm not an arsehole, but in my own head, and in anyone's head, you have those things where you, that you think you're good at. And be honest, if you're honest with yourself, you do. You do have those things that you think you're good at. And to me, those were some of the things, those characteristics that, that I had. And that was until one year ago today. After coming out from what was an awesome night out, a great night with one of my oldest friends and one of my best friends. We went and got some food, I had some nuggets I think. My mate got himself like a garlicky pizza bready thing. It was massive, right? And I made a joke about like stealing some, you know, because it was so big. I was like, oh come on, you know, give me a slice. And well, the usual post night out kind of stuff, right? Just a couple of lads enjoying themselves. So we're eating that and now most of that has gone and we're getting in the taxi home and all of a sudden we are surrounded by people. This is what I've always meant by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Being surrounded by these people not only meant the rest of my mate's garlic pizza bread wound up on the floor, it meant that we did as well. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out that multiple kicks, punches and anybody else's guess what else led to me looking like this and being bedridden for the next month. It's a good one, isn't it? I'm very lucky. Played rugby for about 12 years. Never had anything like that. Jesus. Bloody, um... Scans were done at the time, an x-ray on my jaw as well from what I assume was a stamp, purely because of the shape of it. Everything came back fine, so it wasn't a I'm gonna die on the spot kind of situation, so that was kind of it, and they sent me home, and that was kind of fair enough, really. You know, there's, there's other people that were dying on the spot. A couple of months before this I came out of a relationship so at the time I was dealing with it alone and my family lived far away so they can't exactly nip round and just give me a few tablets you know refill the water and make sure I'm good like it doesn't work like that but in my head I'm a big boy I can sort this so I got this you know. Icing became like a military operation I had three my protein ice packs, LSJ at checkout. When the other two were getting cold again, I would take some painkillers, strap the ice pack to my head, go back to bed and fall asleep. And then repeat the cycle when that was cold or, or warm, I should say, I would wake up, go back to the freezer, put the other one at the bottom, take the one off the top that was the coldest, repeat, more tablets, go to bed. And that was just my life for a long time. I was vulnerable and living alone. I'm very open on the internet. It's not hard to find out anything and everything about me. And there I would be a, a sitting duck who can hardly even 
stand up without feeling like his head is going to explode, let alone defend himself. And that was a big reason as to why I, at the time, chose to not take it any further. I, I was just... I just, I just felt like I couldn't. In a way, I was very lucky at this point that I was the most ahead with my videos that I'd ever been. I upload twice a week, Wednesdays and Sundays. I had about three weeks, so about six videos already and scheduled to publish. So whilst I was in bed recovering, I could quietly recover, upload the odd story here and there, and basically pretend that everything was fine, that nothing had happened, and I did this with the goal of, to be honest, being better within a few weeks and just dusting it under the carpet and, again, pretending it never happened. Everyone knows as a young man, you get your head caved in, it's not big, it's not masculine, it's not manly, it's not what society makes us feel like we should be, you know? Especially when you're very open on social media, that is how you should be, you know, as, as a guy, as a male. That's how you should act, because you're a man. So deep down, I was telling not only myself, but my family that everything was fine, I was fine, when in reality... I feel like a completely new, completely different person, and I have absolutely no clue how to deal with that. It's gone down a bit already, actually, so that's good. But, um, yeah, I got I'm not, sh <laughs> not sure what that is. Um, but that's the worst part. And, yeah. I'm okay. It, like, it, it hurts, though. <laughs> that bit's the worst, obviously. It's actually gone down a bit already, so that's good. I'm going to ice it now and actually try and get some sleep. I don't know what this is or how that happened, but that really hurts. Um, uh, and try and get a, yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Check that out. <laughs> so a few weeks, a couple months went by, not much changes. The lump goes down somewhat, but it's still there. And it's very apparent, especially if you knew me before the incident. Obviously I can't train, which is one of my two favorite things to do in the world. What's the other? Editing. I love it. Whether it's telling a story, making people laugh, smile, helping people just have 10 minutes a day where they can forget about whatever the hell is going on in their life. I love that shit. Well, guess what? I couldn't do that either. Why? Because I couldn't stare at a screen for longer than five seconds without my head feeling like it was going to explode. It gave me an even worse headache than what I already constantly had. This headache just, it just wouldn't go away. In fact, I've got one right now and it's a year later. You know, may do with that what you will. That brings me to yet another couple months later where the headaches still haven't gone away and neither has the lump. Training is basically non-existent because I felt like my brain was going to pop every time I did a bicep curl. This is where it really started to take its toll on my mental health. Not only could I not do my favourite things, I didn't like the way I looked either and that was due to sheer lack of training. So obviously there was nothing I could do about it. What I was convinced would be a few weeks recovery tops had turned into a few months with no progress. It was at this point I got referred to see specialists. And this is where I finally started to see and feel like we were making some sort of progress. Here's another update. Um, spotted another lump around here. You can't really see it. There's one there. Um, and there's another one there. Uh, just like pea-sized friggin' things. Hang on. There it is, look. And there's another one there. And a bigger bit. Um, yeah, not bad though, the colours spread down here somehow. So meanwhile, I started playing golf. I couldn't really go to the gym, I couldn't do cardio, I couldn't really do anything. If I'm honest, a few months went by and I felt bloody useless. Until my old man started suggesting golf. We went together at the weekends, met up and played and it was great, both mentally and physically. I bloody loved it. And Dad, I know you'll be watching, are you free next Saturday? This allowed me to actually do something and feel accomplished, a feeling that I had massively missed. I was getting better at it as well, the driving range in the evenings and it was absolutely class. But anyway, we managed to get referred by the therapist from UFB. Must have been her mother's instinct in her or something or either that or it was blatantly obvious that I was not all there in the head. Either way, she noticed that actually I was stumbling around the gym, dropping things more so than normal, etc, etc. Um, she asked me to write everything down to refer me to the hospital. It was lucky, really, because I was just going to put up with it again with the same mindset of, oh, it'll be all right in a couple of weeks, and now we can see that that's just not going to be the case. So thank God for this. The appointments are still ongoing now, but thanks to that, I've had an MRI scan and many, 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 many specialist concussion appointments. Symptoms, as time went by, bearing in mind it has now been a full year since... 
did and have gotten better, but they are far, and I mean far from gone. Fatigue is at an all-time high. I get so tired so easily. I can't train with the same intensity. I've been training at UFB for a good six months when this happened with some of the best bodybuilders that this country has ever seen. I'd made great progress with just how far I could take my physique and just how far I could actually push myself. And I still can't push myself in the same way because the impact site, you know what I'm talking about, it throbs, it pounds, it hurts. And that's tough for me to take, to be honest. I think my concern was that whether you'd had um, an artery and a vein sort of mixing up together and creating a, a new, um, unusual route of blood that would pulse and create a bump like that. They have said that you've had some, um, obviously, trauma to that artery, that's the superficial temporal artery, which was the one that I felt yep. on, on, your, on your temple. Yep. And they think you've had some trauma to some of the sensory nerves around your face. It still hurts to the point that one of my follow-up appointments just a few weeks ago actually he mentioned that this is probably not just a concussion. Symptoms shouldn't persist in the way that they are still almost a year later. Um, for this reason the next step is an ultrasound. Bearing in mind I've had by this point extensive cognitive function tests, spoken to psychologists, neurologists, doctors, nurses, had blood tests, MRIs, CT scans, x-rays, been given medication, basically everything that you could ever imagine, basically the only thing left and also the only thing that wouldn't necessarily have been detected from all those tests is an ultrasound. This could finally help us get to the bottom of the issue, this could tell us if there's an aneurysm. If you get trauma to an artery you can get some called an aneurysm, okay, which is where uh, as it heals it dilates and then it becomes a much bigger kind of abnormal trotty vessel essentially. Yeah. And that's, you know, when they examined you in the concussion clinic where they felt that, they felt it was what we call pulse out, that you could have a pulse out. And there is. Now, what you're hearing is someone telling me that I may potentially over the next few weeks need, well, surgery. I guess it's surgery, isn't it, right? They're just going to cut an area and like take it out. So what they're going to do before that is actually give me an ultrasound scan. We'd be committing you to, because of where it is, the way to access that, just would probably have to make an access in, probably in your hairline or just over it. And that means you'd have a scar in the area. Okay. And what we don't want to do is make a cut into an area and go, well, it looks pretty normal and it's, it's just that the area, the tissue is still swollen and still remodeling. It's a bit long for that, but it's possible. So we have to make sure that there's a reasonable reason to go into the area and explore it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and I think if there was an aneurysm, I, I think we should do that because of how focal your symptoms are and, and, and so on. And it might, might sort things out. Because they don't want to just cut into my forehead which would leave a scar which I also don't want <laughs> they're, not, they're not just going to do that without good reason to so they're going to give me an ultrasound to see whether that is the case um, and we will go from there so that's where we're at an update on that will follow over the next week or two I've got my next appointment in a couple of days actually so that's the full story that's everything that's how where when whatever for everything I think I feel good making this video to be honest as I feel like it's something that I've not hidden from you all but I've just not been entirely open with you all about it's a huge part of my life it has dominated my life for the past year and I just feel like I, I've not spoken about it properly as I've said out of fear so I'm done being scared fuck concussion fuck the guys that did this and may karma do its thing